eating insects. Okay, fine. No! No, <laughs> no I would not! <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because it's disgusting! <laughs> We need to look at different ways of farming um, and also to move away from our reliance on conventional meat. So we'd need meat production to double by 2050 to, to feed a growing population if we carry on consuming meat how we are now. I think with a, a global population that's rising to say just under 10 billion people by 2050, um, without a doubt we can't feed those people in the way that we're eating today. So if we carry on eating how we do now, we're going to need 70% more food, 120% more water, and it's just not possible, we don't have that. We eat over 120 grams of protein a day, and mostly that's derived from animal protein. We don't need that amount of protein in our diets, we need about 50, 54 grams. In North America, they eat about 120 kilograms of beef, or of meat in general, uh, per head per year. In Europe, it's about 80 to 90. In countries like China, it used to be 25, and in the last 30 years, that rose to about 50 at the moment. And they will definitely rise to the same level as uh, we have in Europe, which means that if 1.3 billion Chinese, on average, are going to take the same dietary intake as we have, then that's simply not sustainable. It's clear that we need to feed all these uh, extra mouths. And so we need to do something to, to make that happen. Insects are such a tremendous group of organisms that basically make life on Earth for us possible. In a world where resources are going to become short, land area become, is becoming short, then the science behind entomophagy and eating insects is highly supportive of this new industry taking off. This is where we feel the insects come in. Uh, they're a very sustainable source of protein, so it's a way of actually looking after the, the land that we've got, uh, farming it more efficiently, so following science, but looking after wildlife at the same time, pulling the pressure off that land, and actually farming in a very different way, farming insects. We're really trying to change perceptions, not just here in Pembrokeshire, but in Wales and also in the whole of the UK. Entomophagy is the practice of eating insects by humans. We're, we're starting to see entomophagy pop up in the media regularly because with a growing population, we can just not carry on farming and eating the way we do. So we have to look for another method, other methods of, of feeding people in the future. Like any new industry, sort of one scare story can destroy the entire industry. And we've seen it with other industries in the past. Um, and then the public get hold of that one story and that's all they associate with the industry, um, despite the, the multiple benefits that that industry may have. So we have to be careful. As the population grows, we're not just going to suddenly change the way we eat. We're not going to cut meat out of our diets. And I think animals have a very important part in our diets. But in order to move forwards as a species more sustainably, I think humans have to include insects in one way or another because we, we do need a, a form of animal protein. The science supporting edible insects is overwhelmingly positive. So insects are very efficient in converting their feed into food for us. So up to 20 plus times more efficient than cattle are in converting their feed into meat. To produce that beef burger, to breed the animal to get enough meat for that burger, you need about 3,290 litres of water. To breed the equivalent amount of insects for an insect burger that size, you need less than a pint of water. So the bug farm at the moment, it's sort of primarily an academic research centre. So we do top class academic research into, into farming, into improving production and into to looking after wildlife. We actually put the research into practice on our farm here and then we can disseminate it to farmers, policy makers and then to consumers. We're also a visitor attraction and, and that allows us here to be able to get people to come and see our research. We wouldn't get everyone coming to a research centre on the future of sustainable food production, but we do get people coming to a tropical bug zoo. So we've got the tropical bug zoo, we've got a museum, a farm trail, and all along the site, this, the visitor attraction, we're just trying to get people to 
understand the farming a little bit more. And when you understand something, you care about it more inherently. And that's what we want to do here. And then Grub Kitchen looks at actually translating the research onto the plate. So we've got insects on the menu, but also lots of non-insect dishes as well. I think what we try and do with our recipes here, which we've developed over the years, is, um, is really try and get people to think of normal food, but replacing that protein with insect protein. So a bug burger, you can make beef burgers, but bugs are basically using their protein to give you that sort of that, that protein hit, which a burger does. Um, but then obviously we use other um, foodstuffs, like vegetables, to give it moisture and to help bind it together. I mean, bhajis, everyone eats a bhaji or a you know, pasta, but it's replacing that protein. So we can encourage people to try making a bug bolognese or a, or a I don't know, a bug sausage roll, you know, things that we're used to eating already, um, rather than just a plate full of bugs. It's so difficult to get people to change their opinion. Everyone thinks insect, pest, yuck, gross. And that's what we need to change. We need to, to get people to, to think about insects in a different way. And that, yes, we're eating them in pretty much most of the food we eat already. Uh, chocolate's full of insect parts. You eat about 500 grams per year already. Anything that is pre-processed. And you never tasted it and you, you're, you were never bothered by it. In large parts of the world, in the tropical parts of the world, insects are a delicacy, just like we eat shrimp and, and lobster. You know, we eat prawns, and prawns are very similar, crustaceans are very similar to insects. So it's all about just getting people to not see it as something wriggly on the end of a stick. It's a sensible food source. There are these great little type of micro farms available that you can, you can have, that you can actually breed insects yourself at home. And it's a really good way if you've got children to learn about the insect life cycle at the same point. So mealworms, for example, are very, very easy to, to breed at home. And you can, you can have all sorts of species that you could breed on a desktop farm and in the future maybe actually feeding on your kitchen waste. Um, that, from a commercial point of view, is a long way down the line. But it's something that you can play with at home so long as you treat those insects with due diligence and you kill them in the most ethical way possible, which is either freezing, blanching or chopping. Um, and then you make sure that you treat them as you would a raw meat ingredient. There are discussions going on on whether uh, insects feel pain. At the moment, there's no definite proof that, that insects would feel pain. So even if they would, it's most likely to a much lower degree than pigs or uh, cows would be. We're not saying to people not to eat meat, we're just, the main message is to cut down the amount of meat we're eating as a society. To get people it more normalised is just to replace the protein in conventional dishes that people are used to eating already and that really, it's not too alien for people then. In order to conserve something you need to conserve where it lives, its habitat. And therefore if we can pull, like I say, the pressure off existing farmland, we can leave more wildlife habitat there and farm insects very efficiently indoors and get a great food source from them. What we find here at the Bug Farm is that it's much easier to influence younger people and we get lots of school groups through and it's at that stage that you can really make a difference. Quite often when, when the school children will come through we do taster sessions and at the beginning they go, oh we're coming here to eat bugs, oh I can't wait, it's going to be gross, it's oh. You know, it's going to be a dare. And then we talk to them about it sensibly. And we try and get away from that dare factor. And 90% of the children we have through say, it's great, I'd totally eat bugs in the future. But it's, to be honest, it's the same with adults. But adults are just less willing to take the plunge at the beginning. Um, but that's where, in Grub Kitchen, having insects incorporated into regular dishes really helps. That it, you're not trying to get somebody to eat a totally new dish at the same time. Uh, you're just pushing one change in practice at a time and it, it makes a difference but I think if we can get our younger generations to appreciate the world around them more, to care, to get out from the house, away from a television screen or a computer screen and immersed in nature, that's where you can see you make a difference because as soon as you realise something's there and how important it is, you can start making a difference and you can be two years old or 92 years old, it doesn't matter. It's never too soon or too late to actually encourage people to, to care. And I think that's, that's the big picture is if we just all cared a little more, the world would be a better place.